To their credit, liberals used to be suspicious of plutocrats and huge corporations, but those days are long gone. Billionaires are now woke, so the Democratic Party loves them for the power they wield on their behalf. Here's one example. When Jeff Bezos' leaked personal text got him into a feud with the National Enquirer, instead of being amused onlookers, the press rallied behind the world's richest man. Boy, did they. Bezos, the wealthiest man in the world, the founder of Amazon, going from being sort of punchline of this sordid affair to all of a sudden becoming uh, uh, praised as a hero of journalism. Makes him almost human, just like Us Magazine. Hey, he's just like you and me, you know, and he's playing this brilliantly. There is a certain amount of badassness about uh, Jeff Bezos that, uh, that I think makes us all <laughs> proud, to, proud to work for him. They mess with the wrong yeah. guy, yeah. and they have found that out. As a source close to Bezos told me last night, do not poke this Bezos bear. <laughs> Don't hurt Bezos bear, whatever you do. <laughs> the press didn't just defend Bezos bear, stroke him lovingly. They also speculated wildly that his texts were leaked by President Trump in collusion with Saudi Arabia, presumably when he wasn't busy helping Russia. We know how he despises Jeff Bezos. Um, is AMI still doing Trump's dirty work? What is going on here? I don't know. I mean, the two leading theories seem to be that AMI is either doing the Saudis' dirty work, President Trump's dirty work, or a combination of the two. Trump has had a has a, had a hard on for uh, for for Bezos. So it's no surprise that that he turned to his good buddy uh, David Pecker at at the Enquirer to, you know, to do a hatchet job on him. Gavin De Becker told us that he does not believe that Jeff Bezos's phone was hacked. He thinks it's possible that a government entity might have gotten hold of his text messages. <laughs> a government entity, Don Lamont agrees. It was a ludicrous theory from the start. There was never any evidence to show that it was true. And now it turns out it's false. Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal revealed that Bezos' texts were, in fact, sold by the brother of his girlfriend. Now, the ridiculous theory has been exposed as a sham, but where are the consequences for this reporting? Does anybody stand up and say, at least, I'm sorry, I lied to you? Nope. Richard Goodstein is an attorney. He helped advise Bill and Hillary Clinton. He's a wise man in the sea of insanity, and he joins us today. So I guess the first macro question is, why is everyone sucking up and defending Jeff Bezos? Because he stood up to extortion. It wasn't because he leaked things. He leaked what he did, which was didn't put him in a very good light because AMI, the parent company of the National Enquirer, tried to extort him. Right. And I he has tapes and emails and so forth. And it raises the question, who else did they extort over the years? We know what they did. They stipulated in court that they made contributions to help Trump win. And, right. and, and they engaged in felonious conduct, which is why Pecker's got an immunity so deal. So they did to him what Stormy Daniels did to Trump. Trump caved, he didn't. And good for him for not caving, by the way. I don't think you should cave to extortion ever. Um, but I mean more broadly. So here you have a guy who is the richest person in the world who runs this giant company that's crushed American retail and put countless millions out of work, that runs distribution centers where people regularly call in suicide threats to 911 because they're so unhappy. And the left acts like he doesn't exploit anyone. He's just a great guy. Yeah. Well, the fact is, I think any big organization, regrettably, has people who are a little unstable. Um, look, the left didn't like him because Amazon is driving out all these brick-and-mortar stores, right? It's hurting people. Exactly. So Except for everybody who benefits from a lower price or and the ease of ordering something. Right. And, and, and when he stood up, fast. but again, what, what turned it was his standing up to extortion. It, it wasn't because anything else. But, but then they thought, hey, maybe this guy actually kind of has some common sense after all. Are you bothered by the fact that the world's richest man owns the biggest newspaper in its capital city, personally owns it? I mean, I, we're very upset about William Randolph Hearst yeah. having newspapers. He owns the only real newspaper in Washington, D.C. It's right. a lobbying arm for his business, right. and nobody says that. I, except there is zero evidence. I happen to be with Marty Barron, the editor-in-chief of The Post, and he said this publicly and privately, zero influence that Bezos has over editorial decisions, reporting decisions. Oh, so zero. You, and if anything, they report all the time any oh, story that So you're close. saying, I, this is reassuring, so you're saying that one of Jeff Bezos' highest paid employees says he likes Jeff Bezos. I'm saying 
saying that if there was any reporter, it would be the story of the year or the century if, in fact, Bezos had any influence and all these these, these reporters totally, who were aspiring to win a Pulitzer personally didn't owns disclose that. the newspaper. Right. He has a propaganda arm in the center of D.C. It's the most influential news organization in this city. It's lobbying, in effect, for him. And that's totally cool because Marty Baron is happy to get a salary? Except, except it's not lobbying for him. And they've done, frankly, exposés about All right. Amazon's influence on the uh, consumer yeah, sector. Yeah, they've done a lot of hard-hitting Amazon. I guess we're all sucking up to billionaires now. Well, we're not sucking up to yes, anybody. Yes, we are. If he starts exhibit, you know, exhibiting uh -huh. any influence, you'll call it out. I'm sure you'll be yeah. the first one. That paper is disgusting. Richard, thank you very much. Okay.